Okay, um, I think we can start. Um, yes, one minute past five, uh, past five o'clock. Okay, hello everyone, and I'm very glad to see all of you here. Um, well, to my person, yes, I'm from Germany, from Heidelberg. Uh, so, excuse me for my English, I do my best. And um, if you ask me questions um, and I don't understand, it's sure um, the problem is sure my language, but I try my best. And uh, to my person, I just show the PowerPoint. Short power. I, we don't have the whole time PowerPoint presentation. We've got a workshop here, but I would like to show, to give you a little bit context, a little bit information so we can move on. Um, yes, I'm a part of a, a researcher group in Heidelberg. The group, ha uh, the name of the group is Didactic Actuel, but I'm also a teacher at the vocational school um, in the region of Heidelberg, and I'm teaching information technologies and electrical engineering. So I'm both, and at the moment, I'm working on a kind of a learning course um, for informational technologies for a level of middle or high school. So it's just a level. It's not special for middle school or for high school. It is a learning course for beginners. And my central idea is I would like to provide computational thinking by, or for beginners, but I would like also to make my um, course in interdisciplinary. So I would like to put all these computational ideas in a context. And uh, the whole course should support computational thinking competences. And there are a lot of learning goals, but first of all, also fun on programming and learning logic and models and simulations, information technologies, and also just understanding the whole um, ideas of programming. Um, yes. And I've got a little experience with my course, so it's not the first round. I've got some academies. I tried uh, it on seminars at the university. And I also got two courses in the middle school and in the technical gymnasium. And then came uh, the virus this year and everything has changed because I've got my course um, uh, partly on a paper and now I put everything in the web. So um, for this workshop, I prepared for you some exercises in the web um, just to show you how it could be. It is work in progress. I don't have the whole course in the web at the moment, but it would appear. And I will show you also the platform, platform where I put my course so in some weeks you can uh, get this course also online. Yes. And also for me, I would ask you to fill in this short survey. There are three questions. It's just for me to know for this workshop, who's there? Who are you? So I would like to... Um, um, just a moment. Um, Okay, I put it in the chat. Uh, where is the chat here? Here is a chat. I put this link in the chat. There are three questions that's for the moment now just to know are there teachers here? Are there researchers here? Are there just interested people here to know probably what questions I can answer for you? There are three questions, so it's a very short. When you go to this link from the chat, you can fill it out and I can go there, I can look um, because I didn't know how many people would participate and I would like um, to refer to your questions and to your um, interests. Uh, yes, so... These are, so this is the, this is the, uh, this is the survey three small questions and then
Okay, and I'm not sure if you can see the results, uh, if I'm sharing the results now, but I can see all of them. And that's nice because then I know what, what are your interests. Uh, so I've got eight answers at the moment, and most of you are teachers and researchers are both. And you're looking for mostly ideas and inspiration and learning new possibilities. Um, yes, and different, okay, perfect. Um, ideas, inspiration, new information, lab subjectivity, and description of my research, okay. Um, yes, that's fine. And just update it again, if I got more answers. 10 answers, okay. I'm very glad to see so many colleagues here, so many teachers. Okay, okay, thank you very much for filling in the workshop. Okay, uh, for filling in the survey, okay, that's nice. Um, yes, um, I would give you a short overview of the idea how I um, designed my workshop and how I designed my course and then I'll give you the first task because I think it is a very nice thing to learn doing activity um, and the idea of my course is also that students learn is self-regulated, they learn on their own and they don't, and I'm not, I'm not in the center of the lesson. So it is not a teacher-centered lesson. It is a student-centered lesson. They do a lot of things. They learn a lot. Um, they have to be um, uh, active in the moment. And that's why I am um, working now on so-called um, programmed instructed lessons. So their students get a lot of description that they can read, they can get some videos, they can get text, they can um, get uh, PowerPoint presentations, for example, and then there are exercises they have fill in. And the whole aim of the thing is to learn how you simulate and how you program a simulation. So, um, This is kind of an end result of the whole thing. This simulation, this result is not the necessary result for students. They can do this. But my idea is to show them a way how they can go to the right direction. So this is the simulation of um, smart city, you know, and if I start the simulation, something happens and all of the parts of the simulation has to be programmed. And how you program this, how you go to the goal of programming simulation, of modeling the whole world. These are five steps I worked out during my research. There is a step one, two, three, four. And if you go these steps, you can probably program every simulation because it's every physical simulation, so every type of simulation, not every type of simulation, but this type of simulation. So um, these are um, steps to go through. And I think the best way is that you go to the, I will send you just a link with a school site. So it's my site where I put the whole um, workshop for students. And I translated just a little bit of things I uh, do at school. And you just try out to make a first step. So it's also called step zero. There, is, there are two steps, step zero and step one. Step zero is just a short introduction. And step one is to start working on this uh, workshop. OK. This is the page, and it also called Snap Workshop. Where you go there, <clears throat> okay. 
When you go there, you are then on this page, and this is the summary of my workshop in English. So I picked uh, different types of exercises, and we go just through the steps uh, together, and then later at the end, I can answer your questions to my steps and to my idea. And I would ask you to start with the introduction. So if you go to the SNAP workshop introduction, there is a very short video, two minutes, and then some exercises, some questions, and you can just try them out. And then you can go back to our Zoom conference. And we can make another step. But between the steps, I would also um, tell a little bit information. So just if you do the step zero and one, just go back to the conference. Please. Oh, Alexandra, would you like me to put them in breakout rooms? Um, that's the question. If someone has problems, we can also go together to a breakout room and I would help you at the moment. So don't hesitate to ask. We can um, go out and do not disturb everyone and can uh, talk about it's probably a technical problem or I can explain things. So probably one room as an option. Okay, cool, done. Thank you. Okay, um, do you need some more time or are you ready? You can also write it just in the chat, then I can see if you... Or you can also see it. Thank you for feedback. Me too. Ready for the next step. Finish steps. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. That's fine. Okay, the next step are probably not that easy, but the first one are. Okay, well then, if um, everyone is finished, I would move on. So um, there was the first step and on this way, I would also do the same thing with my students. I, my idea is, is that it is very nice to have a context when you start to program. So usually, usually, I know a lot of teachers who just start to play with program, how we program uh, one plus uh, one, um, or we just do mathematical functions. Um, and I think it is very difficult uh, for middle school. I think it is very difficult. And I think also we've got a lot of students who are, are not very experienced in this abstract thinking. Mm -hmm. So I just thought how I can catch more students, how I can get my explanations more understandable for my students, because I do this course for very concrete students. I know how they are. I know that um, they have problems with mathematics. They have problems with physics. Um, but um, I think it, it is very important to bring everything in connection. So the idea is to give a context and then just to start lightly so they are not um, scared just at the beginning of mathematics. I can't understand everything. So they, uh, we start very lightly. We start with a little bit fun. We chat a little. And it depends on the school I teach. So in gymnasium, I would make more information for this context. I would make a lot of information for electrical engineering. In so we've got different subjects and I would talk about physical concepts, about inputs and outputs, about um, effectiveness of different objects. 
in reality and for example in the college where I start, start uh, when, where I teach on the information technologies I would just use this as a short motivation and we just talk about um, this context and everybody knows there are solar plants there are wind plants um, that's just a context just a system uh, just a simulation we are work, trying to work out um, what age students mostly um, above 16. So um, you can do this course in the middle school too because I adapted this and you can make the whole mathematical and physical part um, a little bit easier and then it works um, up, um, up 13, 14 years old. I think it was a little bit difficult for 11 or 12 years old students. I think it's too complicated, but with 13, I think they can understand what a solar plant is and they can understand this um, um, dependencies between the things they got physics and they can understand it. Um, so the first step when you're, you just learned in this exercise that this is a physical simulation and on that way, learning the students too. So the idea is to give them exercises and they learn also through exercises. So the exercises are not just to exercise, they also to learn. I give information through exercises, so I don't need to um, explain it the whole time and to tell a lot of things. So the first step is just to do, um, I show it to you, yes. Um, you should uh, you uh, look at the system you want to understand, you want to model, and you're looking for objects and you try to find them, not only in the simulation, but in whole. You try to categorize these objects and um, then you just put it on the stage. And as you can see, I just put uh, the energy resources a little bit on the left side and energy consumers on the right side and the storage is at the moment on the top but on my uh, picture here it is in between so it is shows this energy flow i just make categorization but uh, it is not and the students they don't know this at the moment but it, it is a little bit categorized for them and then this was the step one and step two um, and that's enough at the first step. And then I um, also can give a homework, for example, between step one and two, they can draw uh, the whole designs of the objects on themselves. They are not, um, it is not necessary that they use my design. They can do their own thing. So step one, step two, it is about 90, min 90 minutes or two lessons with 90 minutes, depends on um, school gymnasium a little bit more, uh, the college a little bit less. And then we can go to the step two. And this is the idea that now the objects are on the stage and I just give them some properties. So kind of a color, kind of a costume. So you just can go now to the step two. I hope you can find it on yourself. If not, I just put a link again. So it is a snap workshop and then it is um, the link of, yes. This is this part, objects have properties. And these parts here is optional. I think it takes a lot of time, so you don't need to do this, but later after the whole workshops and after the conference with a glass of wine, if you don't have anything to do, you can do this, but students have fun of this. Students do this and they have really fun on this quiz. Yeah. So I just put again the link. This is for step two, so now just try try the step two. Step two is very short. Okay, thank you very much. Well then,
this is the step two and with students it takes a little bit more time as two minutes because um, I give them different options of properties and we talk about it, what are possibilities at the moment. We also learn how the environment of SNAP works. So they, they are clicking everywhere and they uh, try it out. And then I just say, okay, then um, place the stuff you draw, pictures you draw, and make your own design, make your own costumes, think how you want that it looks like. And we also usually need about 90 minutes um, time for this step. But it's also a very um, funny period of time because they really have fun on designing and they have also very creative ideas, much more creative than I have. Um, and uh, then we are at the, at the point that they've got a design. They understood how the physical process is working. So we've gotten producer sorry to consumer and this idea works actually for every type of physical simulation in chemistry uh, the whole thing uh, the same thing in physics very usual type of process uh, that you've got some inputs and then something happens and then you've got an output and then we just can move on to the next step of programming and this is um, the first step where it becomes a little bit difficult because now we say our objects um, can, has, can have activities, only the objects. So I can, um, just a moment, I show this, show my page, yes. Um, objects have their own actions. So that means I just work with each object on their own and I just think what happens with the object. Um, you, you saw in a first introducing video probably that for example car moved the whole time, um, the houses had different costumes, there were light on and off, the sun is moving on the sky, um, the roto is rotating the whole time, solar plant can, for example, change the color. So these are the actions of my objects. And here is the step three. I think we can, there are some ideas of what you can do with students. Um, you can do a lot of things because probably students have their own ideas of producers, also hydroelectricity, it would be also possible at the moment. I've got wind and solar plants, so I've got the resources, sun and wind, and I can um, here, for example, make an animation for a car. So they just, and I've, just in a moment, you can try it out. I can make an animation for a storage, or I can make a very complicated thing. I can talk with my students, and they said also with gymnasium, Usually I can talk about the wind distribution and it is a certain mathematical function called Weibo. And for them it is relevant for their um, subject environmental uh, electrical engineering. And with them I can do this stuff and then I program it with them. So at this point the time depends on um, um, students you've got. I would do, I would for example uh, with students from the college, I wouldn't do with them this wind distribution because it's too complicated and it's not necessary. We just put some random values uh, between two meters per second to seven meters per second and that's enough. But with uh, gymnasium I would really program a numerical, um, numerical values of this distribution and put it in the operator uh, wind velocity, for example. So this below, you see the link to the uh, project. This is the workshop in process, so it is not ready at the moment. And there are some things that are not filled in. So you can probably um, just take five to 10 minutes time and make a car animation 
or probably a storage animation like you see this in the video because costumes are there you don't need to to uh, draw something you can use the whole thing but you can just uh, try out how it could be and how you could make a charge level costume block everything is there and and you can go here with this workshop uh, with this link and then if you open it you can go to edit and then you see um some things are there for example sun motions is very complicated i do sun motion on the the, the very good class but then this mathematics it's not a complicated mathematical function, but for students in the, uh, for students some, sometimes it is. And uh, so I go to, for example, yes, the storage. And here the method charge level costume. And you can fill it in because there is some missed information here. And the costumes are there. Here you are, here them, all of them. Or for example, car movement is also not here. And at the end of this workshop, I will give you the whole project. So you get the whole thing. It's not a problem, but just for this workshop, you can try, try out five to seven minutes, I think. And still, if you have problems with programming or just questions, um, don't hesitate to ask. I would go with you to a breakout room or just here in the whole group and I can share uh, my screen and show if you have a problem. Okay, uh, what modeling experience have students before this lesson? No, they don't have any modeling experience. They, s they have modeling experience probably from uh, the lessons in mathematics and physics, usually in mathematics, but the exercises, I don't know um, where are you from, we've got usually kind of exercises. Um, for, for example, in geometry, they, they have um, a house and they have a tree and they have to draw a function. Um, and then they have to count um, uh, the distance between a house and the, and the tree, for example, this kind of modeling. So it is um, not really modeling in computer science. And this is the idea that they go on with these steps and they understand, okay, um, what is the strategy to make a model? And to help them on this way, I also um, talk with them and I also say, what are we doing now? So to the end of the lesson, uh, um, after they complete a step, I just go back and just say, okay, and what was the aim of this step? Why did, why, uh, did we uh, do it on this way? And that's why um, they understand also what is the strategy and what is the way how you can do this and at the end after this uh, this course takes between 10 to 12 units about it depends 8 to 10 it depends 8 to 12 it depends on the level uh, if the level is not that high i just make eight units and make it a little bit easier and if the level is experienced i make 12 units with mathematics and physics and modeling and at the end, I just say you can do your own project and you can um, make your own simulation. So take another subject, another topic and make a simulation with the same steps or just make on your own game or in your own um, application. But usually about half of students make a simulation. So they um, um, go through the steps again. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yes, I can, mm, I'm sorry. I put uh, the link, um, yes, sure.
for that. I just need to find my page. Yes. This this should be the link to this project. Okay, I would just give you three more minutes and then we move on to complete all the steps and have have enough time also for the questions. Okay. Um, can I move on or do you need some more time? You would like to try out a little bit more. Okay, I'm glad that you're working uh, so passionate at the moment. Yes, uh, you can, you can, I, I would like to show all the steps, but if you really like to work, um, then um, give me a message and um, I can do also slowly. Okay, so we move. So there was a step, yes, there was a step. Um, Number three, yes, and then we go on. So, okay, I just show you. Yes, so to the step number three, it is a very complicated step because in this step, I have to make the students very complicated concepts. The first concept is the variable, very complicated um, cycles, making decision with the source code. And yes, um, then also more, uh, more cycles, more iterations together, one iteration put in another iteration, for example. So on this step, you can stay, you can um, learn a lot of things. So this is an example of objects have their own actions. So this is um, here on the left side. This is my object um, solar plant. And I put two actions of the solar plant. One is the um, yellow one said solar power, and the other one is the design for solar plant costume. Um, I make two categories also for, I, I do it with students just to make their source code a little bit clearer. And here I uh, said solar plant costume is quite easy. Um, on that point, I can learn easy how you make a decision. Uh, so uh, the uh, Y coordinate is the position of the sun. So I just say when the sun is um, above the horizon, my solar plant gets pink and then the sun is below the horizon. The color effect is zero. So my solar plant is just blue as you see. So it's just very easy colorful effect but it makes visible that solar plant is working now. So the sun is above the horizon, it's pink. And this one is a complicated one. You can do it also on an easier level. So when the sun is above the horizon, um, I set the solar power, and this is a mathematical construction of um, calculating the power area of the plant. So what in um, square meters, um, because it's a, m a mathematical uh, simplification, so it's an area divided to 10 by, and these are a thousand energetic units, a thousand watt, and this is um, a power of a solar plant. So it is kind of a real calculation, and I won't, won't do this with um, the college, for example, with them, I would just say, okay, if the sun is above the horizon, solar plant gives us about uh, one uh, one thousand five hundred energy units, very easy. And on the um, when the sun is 
above the horizon, so the zero. But you see at this point, you can make it complicated and interesting for different students. So I, I have got with my simulation a range of different students and I can, can work with different students, also with different level and different age. And yes, this is to the step three. And then we move on to the fourth step and it is still a complicated step. So for both steps, you need a little bit time. It is the step four, objects should interact together. So that makes the whole sense of the simulation that I've got the power from sun in the, in the, the solar energy, it goes to the solar plant and solar plant transforms the energy and then it moves on to storage with um, some losses but it doesn't important at the moment but i can also do this it goes to the storage and from the storage the consumers can take the energy out so this is the interaction of my uh, objects and i have connect when them with logic and you at this point i can connect them with a uh, variable so um, I just say and for that you need a variable and you need to understand what is a global variable what is the private variable so I just say uh, for example I show it now on the page yes um, just a moment. Yes, this is the description here. So um, here, global variable battery capacity. And this variable can be changed through all sprites. So the producers give an energy, give energy units to the battery capacity and consumers can take the energy from the battery capacity. So I just set for solar power a um, certain amount of energy units. I just set for wind plants certain amount of energy units, for hydroelectricity certain amount. It, uh, uh, they're all, uh, the whole time we've got these energy units, energy, the power. So they uh, move on to the battery, uh, to the storage, and then the, I can have a lot of different consumers arrange a car, a house, people, everything actually so and they can take the energy from that so um, I've got also a little example for this here is in this um, snap workshop in pro in process you've got for a solar plant this one category and you can just put it together like a puzzle and you just saw it an example at the moment so if you go to the um, just a moment. I'm sorry. If you go, yes. Mm -hmm. If you go there, the solar plant here. You can just put it together, just as we talked, and this instruction is for connecting objects together and um, I've got here at the moment the variables that are not uh, they are all global I think it was a mistake so if you do it um, with your on your own um, you can make this variable global and there are uh, another variables just private so that's that's fine then so if you like, you can, uh, oh, we've got not a lot of time. Um, okay. Um, my question is, would you like to work two minutes on this step or, would, or should I go on and make um, the whole thing? Completely. Okay. Um, if okay, if every, okay, well, I move on. So 
but I think it was clear how um, how you connect the whole thing. So you connect um, now. You are on the step four. It is a very high level for students now. We connect the objects together, and then we are on the um, last step for working on is to make the step six, uh, the step five, and step five. Um, Oh, I just, I think I'll just show it um, on a simulation here. Yes, the step five is uh, to make the whole simulation to a system. So we programmed it all, not only for visualizing the different objects for users, consumers, but we want it also used as a simulation. So at that point, I can make um, kind of a user questions and answers. And I can use these answers for calculations. So I make my uh, modeling of simulation to a simulation itself. So the whole time we just modeled and modeled and just thought, okay, how I can um, describe the uh, world around us and, and, and at the end, the uh, this system is complete, uh, compl uh, is uh, done. So, for example, here, and on this uh, step, you can actually um, on this step you can um, make different variables, everything you want. So, for example, how big is the solar plant in square meters? And I just put it in that way. I can set it here. And I just say, okay, my solar plant is about 50 square meters now. And this value I use at this point. So I can just say uh, to my students, uh, what would you like to make variable? What would you like to change? Which values are important for this simulation? Is this the area of a solar plant or is it a color of a solar plant? Um, is this um, size of the rotor? Can I change it? Can I scale it? Or is it, for example, I think here, how many people live in this house? I can say in this house live about five people. And when I go to the house, yes, I can set the consumption. And then I, at that moment, I can say to the students, how many energy do you consume in the year, and usually students don't know this. They go at home and they can ask their parents, how many electrical energy do we need? And I think it is a very nice step for students to connect the abstract model we program together with a real world and real values. So you can just say, um, it is about a thousand energy units, a little bit more, but on that way I can use it and then I can say here, I can go back to my connection between the objects. So if anyone is at home, um, their battery capacity, um, I use the whole consumption of the house. And when someone isn't at home anymore, the consumption is less. So it is about 500 energy units, yes. Okay, um, um, there was the steps I do with students and the last step you couldn't complete, but I would give you um, here in the chat, I would give you a link to the page. Um, yes. Uh, and I'm also now, um, takes a minute, but I can um, answer your questions. If you have questions, um, if you have questions to, and just a minute and I put a link, but I can answer the questions.
you can also unmute yourself and ask or you can write it in a chat. Uh, while you are going through the whole process with the students, uh, have you considered uh, using some like debug information or some checks where students uh, can see that what they are actually doing is correct? Mm, okay. Um, I make the whole units of, I make the units small so they see their start, the beginning of the simulation and they know the idea how it should work. And then they just do the exercise and usually I'm there so I can say, well, try again. So this is my, um, um, I'm with them. And after, during the virus, I was at home and we did conferences. So for example, um, we just did together conferences individually and they show, um, they show it to me. That's the way. Um, debugging um, isn't this simulation possible on a visual way. For example, when they program the sun movement, um, it is a little bit difficult for them, but they can see when they are programming that the sun doesn't move uh, on the right uh, trace. And this is the debug, the way of debugging for them. How long does it take to complete the, oh, there was a private question. I'm not sure if everyone can see this. How long does it take to complete the whole series of lessons? Um, as I said, it depends. It depends on the level of students between eight units of ni uh, 90 minutes to 12. And if you like to do it in a perfect way with, with uh, every complicated thing, I think it, it can take also 15 units. I, I've got uh, one unit a week, uh, 90 minutes. So it is about eight to 12 units. And I've got also in German uh, 12 videos. They can uh, show the videos and they learn also through videos which parts of the lessons the students have difficulty in? How do you help them to overcome? Um, um, logic. Um, mathematic with logic, these are very difficult parts for students. Um, the first difficulty is to understand what is a variable, um, but then they are also um, have problems with this classical, what is an iteration, how it works, and what happens when I put one iteration in another. And then I show with my, with this project, I show, I try to show easier ways um, of the simulations, uh, of this iterations, and then I also have exercises, classical exercises of programming uh, to go um, deeper in this topic. And they can do these exercises on themselves, and they give me the um, exercises when they're done. So if you don't understand, I give them easy but uh, clear exercises to um, try it again and to understand it. Oh, um, okay. Do you have, uh, we've got, I think we've got about one minute. Um, do you have any question? Um, okay, I just, Put the link in the chat um, of the whole project. Here is the link. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is the link of the uh, um, project so you can get the whole project and you can um, work it through. Yes, well, you're welcome. I hope you had a little bit fun and you could also try a little bit out.